Okay, here we're looking at population growth models that can be uh, applied to the world's population, estimating different uh, growth scenarios as being low, medium, or high, or we can, in this case, mushrooms or plants or just about anything we can, that has a population, we can apply growth models to. So we're gonna start here by applying it to an example of yellow perch, which is a freshwater fish. The question is, how many more deaths occurred in 2001 than births based on this data compared to the year 2000? So this is the equation we're gonna use. This delta or change in N or change in population size over the change in time equals the birth rate minus the death rate. We're gonna use this data right here. So qualitative analysis is locate both time intervals, year 2000 and 2001. In the year 2000, the population of perch was 16,000 and the population declined to 12,000 in the year 2001. Therefore, 4,000 more deaths occurred than births. Note, and make a note of this, that it's not as simple as 4,000 perch died. Remember that births didn't cease. We're looking at the difference between our birth rate and our death rate. Looking at the quantitative analysis, plug it into the equation here, we have that 4,000 more deaths than births occurred from the year 2000 to 2001. So while births still occurred, there were still um, yellow perch being born, the difference between those that died and those that were born was 4,000 more deaths that occurred. Now there's different types of curves that I want you just to be in general familiar with. We have an exponential one where it's just continuing to increase at a very uh, rapid rate. It's not linear, it's exponential, it's much quicker and a logistic curve here where we see a rapid increase and then a leveling off or a plateau that occurs. Looking here at exponential growth curves, this is the growth rate of E. coli. If we apply the same kind of idea, the uh, change in population size over time equals the maximum of per capita growth and per rate of the population. One of the most common examples of exponential growth here is bacteria because they can multiply at a very fast rate. Each bacteria can split into two cells and doubling. Uh, this, may, this may only take 18 to 22 minutes for this to occur, depending on the conditions. For example, if we only start with one bacteria, which doubles every hour since it reproduces asexually, by the end of the day, just looking at a day count, we'd start with one bacteria doubling, in this case, every hour. Uh, by the end of the day, we would have over 16 million bacteria if it followed this exponential growth curve. Now, this exponential growth assumes the population is growing without limits at its maximum rate. You kind of see that here. However, there are environmental limits no matter what system we're talking about. So while we do have an exponential phase here, theoretically that would continue on forever. However, there, this doesn't happen because of environmental limits. We have this plateauing, and we can even have the reverse occur where we have a death phase that occurs. The logistics growth model here is no matter how fast populations grow, they eventually reach a limit, and that's kind of evident here where it's plateauing. This is imposed by shortage of important environmental factors. It could be nutrients, it could be water, it could be space, it could be light, any combination of these, depending on what organisms and what geographic region we're talking about. Now there's something called carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that an area can support. It's symbolized by the letter K. So here we have time and population size. Early growth is rapid. It's almost exponential here. Growth begins to slow. There's kind of a point here. And later growth falls to zero. Now that doesn't mean that there's zero individuals. The growth rate will fall to zero. The growth rate reaches that carrying capacity. That kind of maximum number of individuals that a particular region can support. So A is showing an exponential curve, which really does not occur in nature. We have this more logistic curve. We have exponential for a short period of time and a leveling off as those organisms approach what we call or termed their carrying capacity. As the population approaches its carrying capacity, the growth rate slows because of limited factors. The logistic growth equation accounts for this. The graphical plot of N, which is number of individuals versus T, time, gives an S-shaped signal growth curve. We see that here, we're starting with individuals, we have an exponential phase, we have a stationary phase where things level off, and in this example, we also have a death phase that falls back down over time. Showing a nice image of comparing the two of exponential uh, versus logistic growth, 
Exponential assumes unlimited resources where populations exhibit exponential growth resulting in this J-shaped curve. More, more realistically, we have this logistic growth model, which has a carrying capacity. Populations exhibit uh, logistic growth where expansion decreases as resources become more scarce and levels off when the carrying capacity of environment is reached, resulting in this S-shaped curve. And this is one that's more true for biological systems. So again, we're using this model here for what's the carrying capacity of this yeast. We see uh, this only takes hours. It goes very quickly. The amount of yeast, that carrying capacity. So you should be able to look at a graph and determine the carrying capacity and also the time it takes to reach K for that carrying capacity. So looking at our yeast specifically, it takes about, um, what's the carrying capacity is about 13 um, individuals, we could say, for this given uh, environment. It takes approximately 30 hours for this to occur. Overall, this one's pretty easy. Let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. So the paravisium here. Uh, what's the carrying capacity and how long does it take to reach that? Well, some populations fluctuate greatly to make it difficult to define that carrying capacity. Some overshoot and then undershoot, so we're kind of looking at where does that leveling off occur. So take a look. What's the carrying capacity of this population and how long does it take it to reach that? Well, the simple answer is carrying capacity is about 130, as you see here. It takes approximately about 100 days for it to kind of level off and reach that um, determination. So hopefully this is helpful in allowing you to understand population growth models.